So this is 6.3 and, and we are going to keep our work going with this unit circle and we're going to uh, keep focusing as well on finding exact values of trig functions. So let's let's dig in a little bit. Um, just to just to remember from last time, for example, if I wanted to find something like a sine of 120 degrees or, or cosine of 120 degrees, essentially on this unit circle, I can treat this unit circle like it's a lookup table. Unit circle, there's 120 degrees. It's that rotation right there to that position. And I have an x value and a y value. That's a point on the unit circle after I rotate 120 degrees. And remember, uh, sine is, is associated with y, or the height. And cosine is, asso is associated with x, or the width. So if I look at sine of 120 degrees, that's basically asking me, at 100, if I rotate 100 degrees, what's my height? Like how tall is it here? What's this distance right here? And it's the y value because that's a 1. So uh, the exact value of sine of 120 degrees is root 3 over 2. The exact value of cosine, that's the width, negative 1 half. And again, this unit circle gives me this ability to think about direction as well as magnitude. Right, magnitude being the length of the line, direction being the direction it's going, what way it's going. So thinking about this unit circle, I want to point out a couple of things. And, and last time we talked about it a little bit, how there's really a lot of symmetry in here. For example, this, this height of one half right here, it's the same. Or this height of root two over two, it's the same. Um, or these width, this width here, of root 3 over 2 is the same here and here. All right, all these widths are the same. Now let's think a little bit about how things are changing. If sine is height and sine is connected to the y values, notice here at 0 I have a height of, of 0. And as the angle increases, my y values are increasing until they max out at 1. And notice that order, 0, 1 over 2, uh, root 2 over 2, root 3 over 2, and then 1. And, you know, if I think of this as, as 0 over 2, and I think of this as root 1 over 2, root 2 over 2, root 3 over 2, and this 1 I could think of as 2 over 2, which is root 4 over 2. You kind of have this nice, nice growth in height. And then if you think about the width, the width is doing something similar, but it's decreasing. Instead, it's starting at 1 and getting smaller as we go through these rotations. And it just keeps doing that same pat sort of pattern around the circle, which is a great way to think about it. Is if you can construct this first quadrant of it, you can construct the rest of it pretty easily, um, knowing that you know this is 30 degrees, 45 here, 60 degrees, and 90. So you have these intervals of 30 degrees to here, then to here, then to here, and it just keeps going. And then you also have these intervals of um, 45 degrees to here, to here, to here, and it just keeps going. All sorts of patterns in here that make it, um, that help you remember the values for it. So let's do a couple of these. Uh, sine of 240 degrees. So if I find 240 degrees, it's right here. Sine is height. I know that's going down. Negative root 3 over 2. Great. Uh, cotangent of 495 degrees. Well, I don't see 495 degrees on here, but I know it's coterminal to something. You know, a rotation of 360 gets me back to 0. And then I could keep going. So if I just think about 495 minus 360, is 135. So a rotation of 495 is 360 degrees plus 135 more. So it's here. Cool. So there's my where I'm terminating. 
And now let me think about cotangent. I know that, that uh, if I take tangent and flip it over, that'll give me cotangent. So tangent is y over x, or slope. So that means cotangent must be x over y. So negative root 2 over 2 divided by, oops, sorry, root, yeah, negative root 2 over 2 divided by root 2 over 2. Notice that's just something divided by itself, negative version, negative 1. Mm -hmm. Sine of 16 pi over 3 will be similar. I know that this is 2 pi. 1 4 rotation is 2 pi. And I think about that in terms of thirds. Uh, 2 pi is the same as 6 pi over 3. And I just turned it into thirds because this is in thirds. So 1 full rotation would be 2 pi or 6 pi over 3. Two full rotations would be 12 pi over 3. So if I subtract off those two pi's, those full rotations, uh, 16 minus 12 is 4, 4 pi over 3. So that would be these, and then I have to get to here. So two full rotations, and then this much more again gets me to here. And I just want sine, sine is height, negative root 3 over 2. Notice I'm using those coterminal angles to help me get there. And let's take a peek at this last one. Secant of negative pi over 4. So a negative pi over 4 rotation, if pi over 4 is here, the negative rotation of it would be here. See how, that, how I have that, that symmetry. If you don't see it, you could just say, okay, what's 2 pi minus pi over 4? 2 pi, think of this in terms of fourths. That's 8 pi over 4 minus 1 pi over 4 is, is 7 pi over 4. So it's here. And I want the secant of this value. So um, I know that, that secant is cosine flipped. So if cosine of some angle is x, secant of that angle is 1 over x. So cosine <clears throat> would be root 2 over 2. Secant is that flipped, which would be 2 over root 2. And notice if I rationalize that denominator, I get 2 root 2 over 2, boop, which is just root 2. Let me think a little bit about going around this circle, these values. Um, sine is height. So if I look at anything from here to here, notice sine will be positive in this range. Whoops, I'm going to say greater than 0. Right? All, all my y values are positive in here. So in the first and second quadrant, sine is positive. And then if I look down here into the third and fourth quadrant, it's going down here. All these y values are negative. So sine must be negative in here. Uh, similarly, if I think about cosine, cosine is width, this direction. So in the first and fourth quadrant, Cosine's positive. All those x values are positive. And in the second and third quadrant, cosine's negative. Cosine must be less than zero. And then one last piece, uh, tangent. Tangent is y over x. We could also think of tangent, since sine's y and cosine's x, tangent is basically sine divided by cosine. When I say basically, I mean it is exactly that. So if I go in here, positive divided by a positive, in here, tangent is positive, and in here, a negative divided by a negative, tangent is negative. In the second quadrant, I have a positive divided by a negative, so tangent must be negative. And in the fourth quadrant, I have a negative divided by a positive. So tangent must be negative. So I can start even to think about, like, if I don't even know the angle, I don't even know the measure of the angle, but I say something like um, sine, of, sine of some angle 
is positive, but cosine of that angle is negative. I actually know what quadrant it's going to be in. This means if sine's positive, it's going up. If cosine's negative, it's going left, right? Height and width. So up and left would be in quadrant two. So whatever this angle is, T must be in quadrant two. I can do that sort of thinking if I just know um, the, the parity or the sine SIGN of each of these trig functions. So let's step a little bit away from unit circle for the rest of the lecture. You have some ways that you can find values on the unit circle. Um, you know, like if I ask you what's the exact value of tangent of 7 pi over 4, you can basically look it up, maybe do a little calculation and get there. So next thing I want to do is uh, kind of a, it's a fun exercise that helps you really get at these meanings of these functions. So let's say I told you that secant of some angle is 2, and it terminates in quadrant 4. And then I'm going to ask you to find all six trig functions for that, for that angle. So you'll find these. So we already know some things. We already know that secant is 2. And if we know secant is 2, that means cosine must be 1 half. It's pretty good. I mean, we, there's two of them right off the bat. So let's do another piece here. I know that this ends up in quadrant 4. So it ends up here. So if cosine is, is 1 half, that means that basically my if this is 1, my width is 1 half. Or remember... Uh, if I don't, uh, this doesn't have to be fixed at one. It could be that this is one and this is two. Think about the adjacent over the hypotenuse part of the triangle. And theta is here. So in order to get all these other values, I'm going to find this missing side. And I'll just call it y for now. So one squared plus y squared must equal two squared. I'm going to use that Pythagorean theorem. <laughs> So y squared equals 3, so y must equal the square root of 3. And that is the magnitude of it, or the size of it, but notice it's in quadrant 4, it's going down, so that must be negative. Right? If I'm down here, sine's negative, it's going down. The y value is negative, the height is negative. So that means my sine value must be negative root 3 over 2. Yeah, and my tangent, y over x or sine over cosine, is negative root 3 over 1, which is just negative root 3. In other words, if you go sine divided by cosine, the 1 halves cancel out. So if tangent is negative root 3, cotangent is the reciprocal of that, which would be one over a negative 1 over root 3. And if we rationalize that denominator, you know, multiply by root 3 over root 3, that's negative root 3 over 3. Um, cosecant is going to be sine flipped over, so that would be negative 2 over root 3. And if I rationalize that denominator, negative 2 root 3 over 3. Great. Okay, so let's go ahead and we will uh, we'll do us another one of these. And I think that this screen is getting pretty messy, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just completely start a new screen up. For, the, for my last two examples. So we have some, um, some angle and we know where it, we know the point that it goes to. So I'm going to say it terminates at um, 8, negative 15. And we want to find all six trig ratios for it. So I'm going to start with a sketch um, over 8, down 15. So that would be about here, the point 8, negative 15. So that means, notice it goes over 8, down 15. So there's my x value, there's my y value. So let me find r. Um, so I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem for that. 8 squared plus negative 15 squared equals r squared. And so uh, remember when you do this, if you're going to square negative 15 in your calculator, you want to make sure that you are um, putting it all inside the parentheses. So if I add these together, this is uh, 289. Let me see if square root of 289 does anything for me. 17. 
R17. So this, it must be a 17. Great, so all six trig functions, let me get them written. And let's go ahead and pick away at this. So sine is about height. So it's y over r, negative 15 seventeenths. Cosine is about width. So it's 8 over 17. Tangent is slope, rise over run, y over x. Great. And then uh, to get these reciprocals, I really just need to flip these over. So this would be negative 17 fifteenths. Take the reciprocal of them. 17 eighths and negative 8 fifteenths. And that's done. Okay, great. So let's do uh, one more like this. And I think I'll just do it this way. So t terminates at the point negative 7. I want that to be a negative 3. Uh, find all six trig ratios for t. I'm going to sketch it. It'd be back and down the point negative 7, negative 3. So notice this distance is negative 7 when this distance is negative 3. Okay, so let me figure out what r is. I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem. So 49 plus 9 would be r squared. Uh, 49 plus 9 is, is 58. So r must be the square root of 58. And I can't pull any squares out of 58. It's like 2 times 29. So I'm, I'm going to leave it a square root of 58. And I'm going to find all six trig ratios for it. So let me get those written down. So sine is about height. So it would be negative 3 over square root of 58, which is going to rationalize to negative 3 root 58 over 58. Cosine is about width, so it would be negative 7 over root 58. Rationalizing to this, not that, this. Tangents y over x, rise over run. So notice it's negative 3 over negative 7. So it's positive 3 sevenths. And then these reciprocals, I can flip them. So if tangent's 3 sevenths, cotangent is 7 thirds. Uh, cosine's negative 7 over root 58. So negative root 58 over 7. Notice I, I don't go and flip this one because then I'd have to rationalize the denominator again. It's just more work. I can just go back to this one, take the reciprocal of it. My, my radical's on the, in the numerator. I'm in good shape. Similarly, if this one... I take the reciprocal of it, and there it is. So now I have all six trig functions for uh, for angle T, which would be this angle right here, because I know where it terminates. Today, I just really want you to get more practice uh, finding, finding those uh, trig functions using unit circle exact values, and then sketching it given some partial information to find them. And this is just really practice to really get us to think about what does sine mean, what does cosine mean, outside of a strictly right triangle context. Uh, send me any questions that you have. You can message me, post in the forums, and good luck.